Hello students, welcome to Show of Sir's classes. So in today's video, we'll solve question number 94-95. So in today's video, we'll solve question number 94 until 96. So three questions we'll solve. So in today's lecture, first we'll start with our qu first question, which is question number 94. So as you know, we are continuing our discussion on Hyderabad Central University MA Economics 2013 question paper. So today we'll be focusing on three questions. So in question number 94 it is given inverse demand function is given by p equals to this where x is the amount of commodity demanded now we have to calculate consumer surplus amount at x equals to 3 unit so so it is given the demand function is given so i'll write down i'll take another page So here, first I'll write down the equation for demand function which is given by P equals to 35 minus 2x minus x square. So it is given by 35 minus 2x minus x square. Now at x equals to 3, the P price will be equals to 35 minus 2 into 3 minus 3 square. So now if you calculate this, you will get the value to be 35 minus 6 minus 9, which is 20. So, so we have found the value of P to be 20 when X is equals to 3. Now, if consumers, if the consumer pays per unit, price of 20 for 3 units then consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve above the price line which is 20 so if you draw the demand curve here is a negatively slope curve say p is given to be 20 so at this level so now here at this price level the consumer surplus would be equals to integration 0 to 3 so it will be integration 0 to 3 because 0 is the minimum 3 is the maximum quantity and the price equation will be 35 minus 2x minus x square dx so we can write it is in, in limit 35 minus 2x minus x square which is this now x can be between 0 to 3 dx now what we can do this is minus 0 to 3 20 dx that is this one so this one and this one now if you minus this one from this one that is this area from this area this entire area from this area you get the consumer surplus and you will get it to be equals to 35 minus 2x minus x square sorry it will be 35x it will be 35x minus x square minus x cube by 3 0 to 3 and this will be minus 20x 0 to 3 so now it will be equals to 105 minus 9 minus 9 minus 60 which is equals to 27 so now what we have done here see it is given the demand function is given by this now it was also given at x when quantity is x equals to 3 that is at amount of 3 quantity 
we get the value of price to be equals to 20. So we have got the value of price to be equals to 20. Now if consumer pays per unit price of 20 for 3 units then consumer surplus is at the area demand above. So you know the area below the demand curve and above the price line is consumer surplus. So we basically have to minus this entire area. We have to minus this area from this entire area to get the value of this area. So what we have done, we have just taken integration of this entire area which is 0 to 3 and 35 minus 2x minus x squared dx and we have taken the value of this area which we have found to be 20 minus dx. So now from there what we have done? We have simply solved it and got the value to be equals to 27. Now we will get back to the question paper again. So, so for question number 94 there are four options are given out of which we have found the option D which is 27 to be the right answer. So here it was given apply integration method. So by doing that method we have found the value to be 27. Now we'll go to question number 95. So in question number 95 it is given total revenue curve and total cost curve are given by this and this of a monopolist firm. Now at what level of Q the total profit of the monopolist will be maximum? Apply mathematical method, method of maximization. So it is given apply mathematical method of maximization. We know for monopolist we have to first find the total, the sorry, we have to first find the profit equation. So we know the profit equation for monopolist is given by total revenue minus total cost. Now here total revenue is given by 100 minus 100 Q minus 3 Q square and total cost is given by 4 Q square minus 10 Q. Now if you simply solve it, you will get the value to be 90Q minus 7Q square. So we have found it to be 90Q minus 7Q square. Now if you solve it, if you simply differentiate this profit function with respect to quantity, then you will get the value to be equals to, from here you will get 90, from here you will get 14 Q. Now we have to equate it with 0. If you do so, you will get the value of Q to be equals to 90 divided by 14 which is nothing but 6.43. So we have got the value to be 6.43 which is option A. So what we have done? So for monopolies firm, we know the profit maximizing output will be where the profit is will be maximum for this first we have take it total revenue then we have taken total cost the total revenue minus total cost gives us the profit function now simply we have to differentiate the profit function with respect to q so by doing so we got the value to be equals to 6.4 Hello students, so now we will be solving question number 96. So in question number 96 it is given if the total utility function is given by utility x1 comma x2 equals to x1 x2. Now it is maximized subject to budget constraint x1 plus x2 equals to 6. So now the total utility will be maximum when x is equals to and 2 is equals to so we have to find it applying mathematical method of maximization. So first of all I will have to write down. So here for this we have to first write down. So here what we can do is
will simply write down the utility function so the utility function is given by x1 plus x2 equals to sorry the utility function is given by x1 x2 I will take another page for this so I will simply straight away form the Lagrange Lagrange basically utility function plus x into 6 minus x1 minus x2 so we have formed the Lagrange function that is x1 x2 plus x x into 6 1 6 minus x1 minus x2 now from here we can simply find the first order condition which will be equals to change in lambda divided by change in x1 so if you differentiate the Lagrange with respect to x1 you will get the value to be equals to x2 plus from here you will get the value to be equals to sorry this will be lambda we will get the value to be equals to minus lambda which has to be equated with 0 now we have to the Lagrange function with respect to x2 if you differentiate the Lagrange function with respect to x2 you will get the value to be equals to x1 from here you will get minus lambda which has to be equated with 0 now simply if you equate this two equation that is lambda equals to lambda then you will get the value to be equals to x2 by x1 equals to 1 so that is x2 is basically equals to x1 now what we will do is we will simply differentiate this Lagrange function with respect to lambda which will get to be 6 minus x1 minus x2 has to be equated with 0 now instead of x1 and x2 we can simply put the other value so we see it will simply become 2x1 equals to 0 so x1 from here we can write it to be 3 and x2 will also become 6 minus sorry 6 minus x1 minus x2 so from here we can say sorry sorry extremely sorry x2 is given equals to x1 so we will consider 3 equals to 3 that is the value of x2 is also 3 so the value of x1 and x2 we have found it to be equals to 3 so now we will go to that question in this question it is given there are two options a is the right answer for this question that is option A is the right answer so in today's video we solved three questions 94, 95 and 96 so in the subsequent video we will solve other questions from the same paper so if you have any query or doubt you can simply whatsapp me on this number which is 9837 sorry I will be giving you another number it will be 98 9836793076 it will be 9836793076 or you can also whatsapp me on this number or you can also go to our website which is www. showropsersclasses.com there you will find a lot of other videos like this and you will also get to see a lot of other materials which are needed for MA economics exam. So thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day ahead.